just upstairs in the uh, Kirkwall Museum and there's an exhibition on about stone pieces just just for a few weeks this summer and up here is the the collection of James Wall's Cursitor who lived from around 1851 and uh, from 1870s onwards he started collecting stone pieces found all over Orkney and Shetland and amazingly the seven stone spheres in his collection which are on display here so let's get in and have a look at these because these are spectacular examples found in the very northern isles um, and I'm just blown away we just stumbled across these So this one here has lost some of its shape. It looks like it's made of some kind of basalt. This one here is just an amazing piece. I've seen similar ones at Scara Bray with multiple kind of um, nodules on them. And this one here has got pecs all over it. You can see little peck marks. They've got little numbers and codes on them. I wonder if that explains exactly where they're from. Then we have the classic six-sided one here which is uh, the most popular, really, or the most uh, discovered design. And this one here is awesome. Look at that. It's like got carvings all the way around it. Almost looks like it's um, molten or something with, with, with uh, protrusions on top. And this one here is absolutely spectacular. It reminds me almost of the Towie ball with the spiral carvings. Well, this one's actually concentric circles on six sides. Absolutely remarkable. I just wonder how many actual circles there are. So we can count those in a moment just to get some idea. But this is this one from above. Let's get some close-ups of that because I think there could be an important numbering thing on here because these are most certainly um, geometric and with mathematical formulas most probably encoded within them and the final one is this one here and this is found on Sande Island and this is something I've seen before we'll have to work out how many sides there are on this one but yeah so this is the collection of James Waltz Cursitor and there's more details up here about him um, but thank god he collected them and now they're here on display at Kirkwall Museum. Obviously we have these hand axes um, and different pieces as well that were part of this collection. I have a very rough hewn axe here. And this is like a postcard he kind of created that describes the six spheres he found, and it clearly states at the bottom there, found on Orkney. So we have some other amazing pieces here, just all from found all over Orkney, some mace heads, but notably, this is the stone sphere that was found on the Ness of Brodgar. This is most certainly the original um, Ness of Brodgar carved stone ball, and I thought it was a copy, but this is actually the original on display upstairs in the Kirkwall Museum. Amazing. Uh, the, the stone ball, the calf stone ball was found, I think it was in 2013. Um, it is, seems again to be unique to the nest, that particular configuration of uh, six knobs on this stone ball, the way how they're deliberately asymmetrically placed with it on the sphere. Um, and, but most importantly, this stone sphere was found in a secure archaeological context, which you know, not many uh, carved stone balls have been found in the past. So we have George Petrie, and he seemed to have found many finds. Here's his case here. But these stone balls really intrigue me. This apparently 
was found on Westray or possibly Papa Westray and it's a perfectly spherical ball pretty much made out of gneiss rock which is a very very hard rock then we have other stone tools and we have this smaller one here so whether these were like part of the stone sphere carving kind of culture or whether these are completely separate because these are probably much earlier in date than the Aberdeenshire and Orkney balls but very intriguing that we're finding all these examples upstairs in the special exhibition at the uh, Orkney Museum in Kirkwall. This was discovered in the late 1940s by Mr. Charles Patterson in the upper sandy moss home hill on the mainland of Orkney. Now this one has 15 irregularly spaced protrusions, four of which are damaged, and it's made of igneous rock, probably camptonite, and it was shaped by pecking the surface and was finished by grinding. This is just one of many examples, over 400, found all over Northern Scotland and Orkney and other areas. And it's just amazing to see one here, a very rare one. I've not seen this one before in any photos. And uh, it's very irregular, it's not very geometric, but no doubt it had the same purpose and meaning as all the others. I mean, that is just a weird shape, like a sort of starfish almost. And this one is very odd. It's got kind of two bits sticking out like legs. Very odd. And this one here, I've got no idea what that one is. This one, it looks like some kind of dinosaur foot. This one here is one of the classic stone spheres, which is one of the reasons we're exploring all the small museums here on Orkney. So this sphere, what they call a grinder, was also found at the Ness of Brodgar. I remember this is here where they found a carved stone ball with six protrusions on it. The classic design we find a majority of all over Scotland. But this is like a perfectly spherical one with no carvings on it. So if this was one that was yet to be worked, we don't know. Ah, oh, here we are. Wow. So here are three of the carved stone spheres found in Aberdeenshire. These are excellent examples and this is the King's College Museum which is currently under renovation but they actually have three still on display and you can still come in here. So you can see the fine examples here. You've got one which has got like lots of little dimples, one with larger dimples and other with concentric circles. So these are just three excellent examples found across the whole of the Aberdeenshire landscape. Obviously in relation to the stone circles, the recumbent stone circles, but usually found in fields. So it's just amazing to see these three rare examples on display. So this is a fine example of one of the stone spheres. You can see it's got six faces and it's got very, very interesting features, almost like a grid pattern all over it. This one has almost got like bobbles all over it. And I'm unsure how many there are exactly because you cannot see all the way around it. But again, it shows you very high level of craftsmanship and it looks like kind of diorite or an extremely hard basalt. So incredibly difficult to carve. This one again has six faces and it has concentric circles on each face coming out in 3D, almost like mounds, like step mounds or step circular step pyramids carved onto each face. But again, this looks like sandstone, which I know that 43 of all the stone spheres were made of sandstone. It's something that Mar Margaret Curtis, who also works with stone, uses when she makes her modern versions of these stone spheres. So we have some other strange pieces also in this museum. This is supposedly a plaster cast of the skull of Robert the Bruce from 1819. But look at the guy next to him from this is from the Kid Rumi Castle from the 1300s. Clearly Robert the Bruce was a giant, uh, absolutely bizarre. Here we have some interesting carving. This is the grave slab from 1500. Um, and it was found near St. Cyrus in Kincardinshire. Very interesting, and it's like a warrior stone. 
and the clave more at 1550 we find this incredible sword that looks like it was by, used by someone very powerful and then we have some picts pictured up here with the the head of a dead man in his hand and some pieces from the pict culture who were prevalent all over scotland apparently there are many more of these geometric stone spheres in display at the college here so we're going to inquire see if we can get access we're going to send them an email and hopefully we can see them before we leave in the next few days because just to be able to see three of them when there's potentially probably a hundred um, is quite frustrating so we have to send an email we have to say it's for research um, whether you have to be an academic but well, i don't know whether being an antiquarian is going to cut it but let's at least find out anyway it's also worth remembering that all over Aberdeenshire we have hundreds of the stone spheres have been discovered here. Just around Aberdeenshire alone, a majority of them, probably two or three hundred have been found. We've seen some in Orkney, we've seen ones discovered down in Bridlington near the Gypsy Race and the Rudston Monolith. Uh, we've even seen three in Aberdeen itself at the museum there. They have more apparently in their storage. Hopefully we're going to see some more. But were they really associated with these stone circles? It certainly seems so. Even though they weren't found directly in stone circles, they were found in the fields around them. This really intrigues me because if that's the case, why were they placing them in the fields? What was their purpose? You know, we know that you can fit them in your hand pretty perfectly, smaller than a tennis ball with brilliant geometry on some of them, lesser geometry on others, but still very intriguing nonetheless. And they are believed to date to the Neolithic era and encode sophisticated spherical geometry. So this carved stone is from Ede Mance, a site actually on Orkney. And you can just see the beautiful double spirals and the way they join together. Remarkably similar, obviously, to what we find in the Boyne Valley of Ireland, and even dating from pretty much the same date. And this is something we find all over the world. It's not just in, um, not just in Orkney, not just in Scotland. We find exactly the same style in Tiwanaku in Bolivia. We find it in Malta and Goza. We find it literally almost everywhere around the planet. I wonder if this was a marker, this was some kind of um, technique or symbol or even a signature of the megalith builders or it could even be representing telluric currents and there's some evidence as well that acoustics, when acoustics is worked in a certain way and smoke and dust is put into the mix these kind of shapes do appear so there's different purposes, different reasons for these but the fact we find them on, the, uh, on some of the carved geometric stone spheres makes it even more interesting because they obviously had a high understanding not just of beautiful art like this but of geometry and spherical geometry and we're going to now see some of the spheres directly including the famous Taui ball. So here we have some of the finest examples of the geometric carved stone spheres we're in the National Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh and we have a, a whole selection here. The one in the middle is the famous Towie ball, or Towie ball, found in Aberdeenshire in the, near the village of Towie. It's got beautiful spiral carvings all over it, and it's, the one, it's probably the most famous one and the most perfectly carved one. We have two here, the strange shaped one on the left, that's from Scarra Brain. So is this one here, number 11, which is very intricate, almost like what looks like markings, suggesting a calendar or even some kind of language carved on it. And this one on the right here, number 14, which is also found in Aberdeenshire. It has beautiful spiral carvings on it. Probably once looked more like the Towie ball, but it's kind of worn now because it looks like it's made of sandstone or basalt. The ones at the back are quite worn, but they show different examples and different styles that we find all over Scotland, and even some in England, of course, of these geometric carved stone spheres. Just to the left side of the Towie ball, we have 
two or three examples from Scara Bray. And these are really strange tools. There's a couple of others scattered around the museum. There's one that looks like some kind of axe head, but it's more like some kind of, could even be a massage tool. And that is one of the theories put forward as to what these were really used for. Now, I believe it's because they were working with sacred geometry, they were working with the Archimedean and Platonic solids to work with surveying and uh, working out astronomy at the sites very far north at 57 degrees north latitude we work with the moon because it stays virtually above the horizon but there's lots of different theories but just take a close look at some of these to see the intricate stone carving and stonework so we have two two more carved stone spheres you just see them here a six-sided one and another well six-sided one but two of the sides have kind of nobules of sort of like a grid pattern on them. So these are from Bogmill and Mont Blairy. And just two fine examples, and they're surrounded by other axe heads, mace heads, and tools found uh, from a similar area. Now, these really are important to me. These are something about them, something, I don't know if it's the geometry or the perfection of them, or it's a symbol uh, that gets me, but really needs more. Uh, research done on this but the one on the the one there the, the classic six-sided one that looks just like the one found in Tiwanaku uh, or found near Tiwanaku around Lake Titicaca which absolutely blew me away when I first saw that but the fact that we find such similar designs on different parts of the planet does raise some uncomfortable questions so these the one on the left there looks a bit bigger than most of the other ones it's certainly bigger than the Towie ball the one on the right very much like um, tennis ball size. So we've made it to the Hunterian Museum in Glasgow. I believe 12 geometric stone spheres are on display here so I'm going to go and try and find them now. So this is what I'm here for. These are the geometric stone spheres found all over Scotland and Orkney and England. Amazing. Let's get in there, Let's zoom in a little bit, see what we can find, see if there's any anomalies, see if there's anything interesting on these particular ones. I'm just here in the Hunterian Museum within the, the college grounds. It's got an amazing old style museum here. And just behind me here you can see 12 of the geometric carved stone spheres. There's some really good examples in here. There's some classic six-sided ones. There's ones with multiple sides on them. Um, there's even one, which, uh, which one is it? That looks like a cube octahedron, the one second from in the middle, second one back. It's a very strange looking one actually. So now I'm not sure if Keith Critchlow has done any research on these ones, but I'm gonna get close in on each one so you can have a good look at them. Absolutely compelling that there's 12 on display here in Glasgow. We're hoping to find a few more at the Kelvin Grove uh, College or Museum as well. If we start at the top left and work our way across we can see the top left one is a classic six-sided one, which is uh, 43 of those are being found in total. The one next to that to its right has got multiple um, nodules on it. I'm not sure how many. Yes, yeah, so the one that's third along on the top has seven faces on it. So this is a very unusual, very advanced level of geometry that these megalith carvers were working with. The one on the far top right has a classic six face, but it's very neatly cut. It looks like the same kind of stone as the Towie ball. If we go to the middle row, we can see the one on the far left has multiple faces, not as many as the one on the top row. The one next to that 
looks like it's made of black granite. And that has six faces. Then the one next to that has, oh, that's a very, very odd looking one. It has five, six, seven, eight. It looks like nine faces on it. So again, we're looking at complex geometries. The one above that has seven. The one in the middle, slightly to the right, has nine potentially. And the one next to that again has multiple uh, knobs on it. If we come to the bottom row, we have a classic six-sided one. The one next to that is, looks like it's made of granite again, extremely hard crystalline stone. The next one looks like sandstone. And then the final one in the bottom right corner has, it looks like another one with seven faces. So again, we're finding very complex, very interesting geometries of these examples found in um, all over Scotland. That was amazing. I couldn't believe 12 of them are on display here. So I'm going to go and check out the Kelvin Grove Museum, which is a few, just a few hundred meters away. Apparently there might be more on display there. So here we have three fine examples of carved stone spheres, all found in Aberdeenshire. The one on the left was just Aberdeenshire, there's no more details. The one in the middle was from Alford Aberdeenshire, and the one on the right is Turriff Aberdeenshire. They all date these ones from between 3300 BC and 2000 BC. They're all six-sided, but all different styles. The one on the left has larger faces, the one on the right is obviously much more puffy faces, but absolutely beautiful examples here in the Kelvin Grove Gallery and Museum. So these are fantastic examples of the classic Aberdeenshire stone spheres, all from Aberdeen, these three, all six-sided and absolutely, utterly amazing. I'm just every one of these I see, they're unique, they have their own style and they just have this some kind of energy about them. So in this one, you can see fine detail of zigzags in the, in the left kind of space on the corner there. And on the right, there's like more striation, straight line striations. So these kind of details are very intriguing to me, especially considering carving out of extremely hard rock. And if you look at it from this angle, you can see there's different types of carving all around in between the six faces almost looks like some kind of feather or chevrons. Whereas on this side, you can see it's like a triangle, like a concentric triangle. There's triangle within triangles that fill up that particular corner. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely amazing. If we come around to the final side here, you can see these just really straight lines echoing outwards in the face that's on the right hand side. And on the very bottom of this particular sphere, we have what looks like kind of grid lines. You know, compared to the top where we have the kind of chevrons, it kind of blends into grid lines all along the bottom there. This one really does look like it almost had string or rope around it. Cause it's sort of like, the faces are all sort of protruding and there's a rim underneath them where some kind of string could easily have been placed. This is perhaps why they believe to be um, weapons and throwing tools. And on this side at the bottom here, you can see again, it's like a triangle within triangle. Whereas this one has nothing on it apart from, you can just see the glistening crystalline rock 
probably basalt that this is made from. Because this one is much more simple. It has more simple lines carved on it. But they're all over it as well. And then finally, it's really hard to kind of get this on camera. We have like dimples. That's very interesting. So it's almost like dimples. So each of the six or eight different corners here have very different looks about them. So a couple of them are the same, but they're all different. So this is a very artistic stone sphere. This is the one found in Alford, Aberdeenshire. So behind me here is a cyst stone from Baden, Argyle. And you can see the beautiful kind of diamond carvings here. Now this is amazing because we saw the exact same thing on some stone sphere from Aberdeenshire. So, you know, what, what are we doing here? I mean, we've, we've found, even found these up in Orkney dating to at least three to three and a half thousand BC. We find them all over the world. So what is this symbolism and why is it here? We even, so it's even the same shape as the bush barrow lozenge found uh, near Stonehenge. And so it's very intriguing that we find this on a kist or a cyst in one of the burials dating to 3000 BC in Argyle, Scotland. So we've just arrived at the Esmolium Museum in Oxford. The reason we're here is because there are some carved stone spheres from Aberdeenshire. So we're going to see if we can find them. We know they have at least five in their collection, but only two are now on display. So we're going to go in and take a look. Behind me, you can see two of the carved stone spheres that were found in Aberdeenshire. That's all they've got on display, although I know for a fact they have at least five in their collection. So we're gonna have a look around the museum, see if we can find the others. But the fact that there's two here, one looks like a, a cube octahedron. Uh, it's got six faces, plus it's got bits coming out between the six faces, uh, which with eight of them, which makes the cube. And above that, you have one with multiple faces on, uh, which we, we found all over Scotland and even up in um, Orkney as well. So uh, let's take a closer look at them and get some more detail to see if there's any clues as to what their purpose really was. It's difficult to tell the exact amount of numbers of nubs on this one, but it looks like there's probably 14 or 15, something like that. It's quite a small one compared to some of the others. I mean, the one below it, is much much larger it's actually like this is almost like the size even bigger than a tennis ball so it's quite remarkable that it's here but this is unique so we have a carved stone sphere here one of the classic scottish spheres discovered probably in Aberdeenshire. It doesn't give you any details here, but it's in the Pitts Rivers collection. So not much to go on, but um, let's have a closer look at this. I did not know this was here, but this is the classic one.
just see this stone sphere behind me which looks like one of the strange platonic solids found in Scotland. The fact that they're here at Tiwanaku or in the Lake Titicaca area absolutely fascinates me because it brings another connection between Tiwanaku and this Lake Titicaca area and Europe because not only do we have Caucasian looking features on many of the statues but even the alignments the astronomical alignments of some of the sites, including Tiwanaku, and the fact that there are 99 stones around the perimeter of Tiwanaku, which also you find at Avebury. But all I can say is that I've seen some artifacts here, including the, the, ro the two rock faces of these very Caucasian looking beings, as well as a very unusual metal, uh, sorry, as well as a very unusual kind of shaped polygon which looks like it's from Scotland it's like one of the stone spheres found in the Scottish stone circles so it's very unusual things here and that you can just see that there are connections with other parts of the world but we're finding the same kind of carvings as we see in other parts of Orkney obviously but potentially other parts of the world this is something Laird Scranton and others have been looking at suggesting there could be international connections with this particular uh, part of the world and it does make sense because we're right next to the sea uh, we know they were a seafaring nation the ancient megalithic peoples we also know they were using the megalithic yard now this has been evidenced and proven by alexander tom at you know some of the monuments in orkney but also by nicholas cope at the nap of Hawa on papa westray so whether they were using it here would be fascinating to know i'm going to look i'm going to look into this because it seems like it's a tradition that maintained itself and i'm absolutely sure they were using different variations of the liberal arts the geometry the metrology the astronomy and so forth to kind of create this agricultural megalithic society which potentially spread south from here and this is evidenced in the grooved ware pottery it's evidenced um, in the stone spheres that kind of may have originated here and then spread to Aberdeenshire and other areas even right down to Bridlington near the Rudston monolith and the gypsy race <laughs> Thank you.